the Kids and Maya at the Museum Santiago de Chile. After a short time, several design details were changed. After removing the two extra front cylinders and sandbox, the cowcatcher could be turned into a snow plow. Details and background information will follow in later videos. In my model, the cowcatcher consists of two castings and several 0.5 thick sheet brass parts as well as screws and brass wire. The buffer shaft, as an example of cast parts, consists of simple geometric shapes. For 3D printing, the geometry is transferred to the Cura program. Cura is a typical slicer program that divides the geometry into layers and prepares it for printing. Important settings such as the layer thickness, the wax temperature and the printing speed are set. The program calculates the printing time and the material consumption. The parts have got a subframe for better adhesion to the printer bed which is now removed. The cleaned parts are assembled into a cast tree. The exact casting process was described in the previous video. And now full steam ahead. The required parts are separated from the cast screen and reworked. The sheet metal parts are removed from the etched plate and the connection points filed. The exact etching process is also described in the previous video. The etched folding lines support the correct folding. Only for folds with a flat angle, I have no fold lines provided. A 3D printed helper makes it easier to control the folding angle.
The one inch screws used in the original correspond in the scale of 1 to 22.5 very exactly to the M1 screws used in the model. According to the original they have tall, slim, hexagonal heads. Only the buffer shaft is fixed with four pieces M2. Later, for painting, however, it is dismantled again. The heads of the M1 screws have a key dimension of 1.5 mm. A suitable socket wrench and tweezers are a basic requirement for this work. The brackets of the coupling linkage are heated to red heat to make them soft and flexible. They are bent at the end to an eyelet about 1.3 mm in diameter. The snow shovels are also smoldered. Interesting enough, I was able to discover three different types of shovels on photos of two museum locomotives at Santiago and Mendoza. My idea was to pre-bend the plates with the roll bending machine and then finish with a 3D printed bending tool. Unfortunately, I overestimated the bending ability of the sheet. For the correct shape, I have to split the shovel and insert a 6 mm wide wedge. I do not use a soldering iron, but always solder with flame.
it is important to heat the thicker part first and let the solder melt, not from the flame, but from the hot metal if possible. I also printed a small helper for the coupling linkage. These 3D prints are very helpful. Finally, the release lever is soldered to the rod. The remaining connection plates to the frame are only assembled when the frame is assembled. Finished! And now the whole lot again for the other end of the locomotive. Goodbye or ciao! And look out for my next video about the construction of the front unit. Thank you to all my followers and subscribers on Facebook and YouTube. Your support really inspires me. Also, a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. Your donations help me a lot.